you know, you were all over the place those yeah, first 14 the years. Moved to India, then Pakistan, then actually India, then Lebanon, then Pakistan, then Lebanon again, then uh, Greece, and then Saudi Arabia. And I came to America, as it were, the United States, when I was 14. So and I went to boarding school in Massachusetts and then college in Washington, D.C. American, there you go. American University, where we are right now. I was a history, a history major, a useless degree uh, <laughs> for the real world, quote unquote. But um, uh, and you know now uh, now I I get paid you know I get paid to be a jackass. It's pretty crazy, you know. Right, right. Well, well. Speaking of American University, you know now that you're that you're here in D.C., have you had a chance to you know visit those stopping grounds, your alma mater, or no? Oh. No reason for no me to. I don't have any of that nostalgia. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, I didn't really have campus life. I had a good time when I was in D.C., but okay. I think somehow when you move around as much as I do, um, <clears throat> you don't identify with geography. You, you don't. You identify with people. Geography is kind of, uh, you know, there 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 are sort of uh, buildings that may remind you of something or whatever. But I never really. I think I learned a long time ago that um, a, a place is really made up of people. And what makes that place special is the people. Mm. Um, I think that's what we stay alive for, that kind of connection. Absolutely. You know? yeah. Okay. All right. Well, uh, I know we were talking a little bit about stand-up, and you were mentioning how how pure it was. I mean, I, I myself, I find it refreshing that, you know, that, you know, a guy like you, you know, you're coming back to, you know, stand-up. I'm mean, Not to say that you well, ever yeah, left, yeah, but... When I started, when I started with uh, acting, I remember I told my father I wanted to be an actor, and I was... I think, you know, 21 or something. And he, the poor guy grew up poor. You know, he just looked at me, his whole face dropped. You know, it's like, hey, Dad, thanks for four years of college and all the money, but I want to be, I want to make believe for a living. You know, I, look, I, I'm an actor. If my son comes to me and says he wants to be an actor, I'm going to say, no, you don't. All right. It's just a crazy business. And none of it makes sense. So, you know, you got a better chance of being a senator than a successful actor. You know, it's just, it's always up and down, man. You get, you get a great job and, uh, and then, uh, and then you're back to square one. So, um, but stand-up somehow is fantastic because it sort of, I'm in control of my own expression. It's all me. You know, when you're, when you're doing a movie, you're speaking somebody else's words, wearing right. somebody else's clothing, you know, being directed by somebody else. It's right. not your expression, man. You're a cog in the wheel. There's nothing wrong with that. But there's nothing like writing an hour of comedy getting up on stage and watching it work, man, watching an audience go crazy over the stuff that you're surprising them with because it surprises you. Mm. It's just unbelievable that I can do this. I, I just can't believe that I get to be a state. You know, my father said to me the other day, he goes, I love what you do for a living. I said, what do you mean? He said, nothing about what you do is parasitic. You know, you, 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 people pay you to make them laugh. I mean, that's a pretty pure, you know, expression I was talking before about that, you know, the, the Christian ideal of purity was Christ, right? And he was a carpenter. I always thought of carpentry as a very pure profession. You know, you work with wood and you, you create something with your hands and, 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 and people use it. You know, they sit on it, you can measure it, you can touch it, you can smell it, and people pay you for that. That seems like a very um, honest profession. And I think stand-up in a lot of ways is the same thing, man. You know, you, you either make people laugh or you don't. And I don't care how much hype or how much, what kind of publicity you have behind you. I don't right. know how famous you are. <laughs> right. I've seen famous people get out there and try that stuff. And it gets quiet. Quick. Crash. <laughs> quick it gets quiet, man. So, you know, your celebrity will take you about three minutes into the, into the game. And then, and then you've got, it's a long, it's a long haul. So I, I've always loved that. I've always felt so proud to be part of a small fraternity of people that can make anybody anywhere laugh for an hour and a half. That's pretty cool. Sean Penn can't do that. Daniel Day Lewis can't do that, and I admire those guys, you know. Right. But they can't do what I can do. I might, I might be able to do what they can do, <laughs> you know, on, on any given day. I don't right. know. I'm just right. saying, or at least I can come close to it. Right. So, uh, I think in that sense, stand up. I always feel so privileged that I'm able to do it, and I still can't believe I can. You know, I just can't. I got two shows tonight. I, I have, you know, that that talk about connecting with people. You get a sense of demographics too. Mm. You get a sense of how different we are, yet how similar we are. You know, that's kind of what's beautiful about it. People vary from place to place, you know, but at the same time, they're exactly the same. 
Right. Yeah, I was going to say that that's why it was refreshing to me because, I mean, oftentimes when you have someone that's doing stand-up and, you know, they get a little taste of television and film, you know, they're like sayonara. They never, you know, look back and they never, you know, come yeah, back to it. doing stand-up because I think somehow, somehow they stand-up... They feel like they're like above it, I guess. I don't know. It's not so much maybe that they feel above it, although there is this notion that ah, I made it out of the club and now I'm doing big movies. No. The <laughs> truth is, the truth is, though, that um, stand-up, stand-up is difficult. I mean, it's not easy. It, 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 once you start making money, staying in some hotel room in the middle of nowhere or in the city, it's lonely. You spend all day alone, and you get up on the road. Yeah it's, yeah, it's called the road, man. Right. Now, personally, I love it. I love the work. I spend all day inside writing or thinking and stuff, and it's it's a pre- I, I love it. But I understand this, the idea of, hey, man, I'm a movie star now. I don't have to do the clubs anymore. But uh, the truth is about making movies and I made some big ones whether it's Hangover or Hangover 2 or you know I just did a movie called Ride Along with Lawrence Fishburne who's a Hall of Famer and Kevin, Absolutely. Hart, Kevin Hart who for my money is hilarious oh my god well, I yeah. think he's the funniest guy working today like I said that the other day on the radio come on Kevin Hart I go yeah Kevin Hart Kevin Hart's a genius hilarious yeah he's, he's a beautiful person he's, he's like in, in, fame hasn't changed that guy at all he's a great guy but he's one of those people when you do, you do a scene you have no idea what he's going to do but having said all that, Kevin still does stand up, and I know why. Absolutely right. Because because when you do a movie, you're shooting a page a day. You want to talk about repetition. You want to talk about piecemeal work. You want to talk about waiting around all day. Yeah, there's uh, no there's no rhythm. You know, you you kind of no it, man. Yeah. No, though, you know, I'd go to Kevin's trailer and he'd be playing Madden. You know, and those <laughs> guys get into a serious game of basketball. <laughs> a serious game of Madden basketball. Like they take it seriously. You know. Uh, but I understand that because you got a lot of time on your hands, so you, that, that's what you're going to do. Right. So, you know, um, I, I guess, again, you know, stand-up is sort of the last bastion, not only of free speech, but as an artist, you are completely in control of your own expression. That's not the case with film or TV. That's somebody else's expression, and you are a part of it. But if you want your own autonomy, um, there's something quite beautiful, especially now in the social media age. Mm-hmm. Because you can make money in all different kinds of ways. You know, you can have a podcast, develop a following, and then do stand up, and they come and see you. And you can really create your own niche. Brand. Yeah, which yeah. comes with its own responsibility, too. As you develop a following, you better keep writing. Right. You got to keep surprising them. They want new magic tricks, man. Right. You know what I mean? You can't. What have you done lately? Right. And that's <laughs> fine. You know, that's fine. I, the, the more you do something, the better you get at it. You know, you, after a while, you start learning how to allocate your mental space. Uh, in such a way that you're always thinking about how to be funny or thinking about, I guess, life in a different way, in a way that will be entertaining to people. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I, always, I was always afraid I wouldn't know where to place my energy. And I think it's very important. I think it's very important for all of us as human beings to learn where to place our energy, our mental energy, our mental focus. And I think it's also very important to be doing whatever you're doing for something important, something that makes a difference, something that gives back, something that makes the world a better place, something that contributes to your growth, something that contributes to your connection to other human beings. And that's what it's about. It's a little bit like when you see guys working out in the gym and they're trying to build muscle just to look good. Uh, or are they building muscle for something like a sport? Right. Right. Or, you know, whatever it might be. There's a difference. There's a difference. You know, okay. one is vanity and the other is utility. And uh, durability, yeah. And durability, man. <laughs> I want to stay around a little longer so right. I can keep doing this. Right. But I really do think that, you know, in a, in a way, when I'm doing stand up as I get older, I, I feel like I'm in a position of service. You know, like a position of service. I'm doing it. For the the thing in it of itself, you know, you get these ideas when you're, you know, maybe famous. I'll, I'll have a big house and I'll be able to drink really expensive wine and be all kinds of girls on a yacht or something. And in fact, all that stuff is a distraction to the work at hand. Right. You know, if anything, if you want to get better, you gotta you gotta put all those appetites in check. And in a weird and ironic way, you don't need money as much anymore. You don't need stuff anymore. You need because yeah, if you're doing it the right way, it's gonna come. It's gonna come. You know. But I think that if you're also, 
you know, as you get older, you should actually, they, they, one of the pillars of, I think of Hinduism is you, you make a lot of money when you're younger and then when you're an old man, you're supposed to give it all away. Yeah. And that, that, that makes sense to me. That's the idea. You know, you make your, you make your money and then ultimately try to, I guess you should be in a position by the time you die where you don't need anything. You know? uh, it's kind of a little spiritual. I'm not that, you know, I don't really think on those terms, but <laughs> as you get better at something, it's hard not to kind of ponder those questions. Sure, sure.